Well, okay, welcome everybody to, to uh, an evening I never dreamed would ever happen. Uh, we'll go back six months and, and, you know, we had no idea where things were going to go when we were first approached almost a year ago about Artists in Residence program. And um, it was one of those transformative moments when I think I was still high on morphine from my surgery. <laughs> and I said, sure, why not? Not having any idea where it would take us. As part of the Cultural Capitals Initiative, the Artists in the Community program placed artists with a variety of unlikely hosts. One of the most unusual combinations in this pairing was that of figurative symbolist painter Carol Wiley and the University of Saskatchewan's Synchrotron Science Facility, the Canadian Light Source. And uh, when we did our interviews and Carol came by, I mean, it was, it was really magic because, I mean, the defining moment for me was when I, she said, well, I'd like to have a studio where people could come in and talk to me. And I just half facetiously said, well, why don't we put a studio right down on the experimental floor? And she said, that would be fantastic. <laughs> six weeks, the staff made me so welcome. They, they brought me into the control room to watch what they were doing there, told me what they did, explained to me what the process was here. Anytime that anybody asked me, where is your residency? Where are you artist in residence? And I said the synchrotron, the response was always, what? <laughs> because it's such a unique thing to have an artist in, in a space that's so scientific. The Canadian Light Source is a veritable metropolis of a facility. With beam lines and corridors and passageways and catwalks, the Synchrotron is a city unto itself. Home to some 130 scientists, administrators, and staff, the light source plays host to biologists, geologists, physicists, and others, making the Synchrotron a place of scientific and creative discovery. six months of our staff and hundreds and hundreds of visitors coming by observing the creative process as it unfolded over that period of time none of us really knowing where it was going and Carol will tell you she didn't either at times uh, because it truly was a synergy between what she was learning about the light source and what we were learning about art and how it how it all came together uh, so spectacularly part of what I, I thought that the mandate of this project was, was to make the connection between the creative process in art and the creative process in science. And so I wanted to, to sort of make that strong connection. Um, 
Einstein's theory of relativity is the result of one spark of an idea. Um, Picasso's Guernica is the result of another. But it's, a, it's the same process. They just diverge in, in, into different products in the end. They're, they're both about the, the process of creation, in one way or another, of new ideas and creative thought. I mean, you have to really be open to all different possibilities to, to uh, progress in either art or in science. And I think that's, that's where, they, where they, they sort of come from the same spot. And the, the thing that I'm really intrigued with is that, that initial spark of a new idea that someone has never thought of before, where does that come from? It's, it's like, it's magical. You know, it's, it doesn't matter if it's, it's something that's going to lead to a scientific discovery or development or something that's going to lead to something new in art. It's that same mysterious spark of an idea that comes from where? So I'm taking art and I'm actually studying science using art, studying synchrotron technology using art. So it's kind of a whole reversal, but I, I get kind of a kick out of that too. And then um, there's also just the creation of the piece. They want to have something that's going to stay here afterwards. It's going to represent how the creative process in science works and how the, how the, highlight how these people here are very creative people. They're working in science, not in art, but they are very creative people. I did take the synchrotron staff to, that, that wanted to go to the Mendel Art Gallery too and showed them what was going on there. At the time, uh, Michael Hosselak's exhibition was there. And so it was quite funny because they, as part of his, his exhibition, uh, there was a lot of chairs that you could manipulate, that, that, that people that came to see could manipulate. So they had these four, three or four engineers trying to figure out how they could build a structure that was you know, really balanced. And, and it was, it like, was basically teetering and they got just the right place and just the right amount of chairs and everything worked out just right. So then they left this art piece there for the, the evening. You know? So it's, it's funny how they overlap and they feed into each other. And it, it's, yeah. it's hard to separate them because I think they come from the same place. So sure. I think it, it's really, it, it's good for people who are working on science um, all day that's what the job that they do, to see sort of the, how an artist works in a similar fashion, that I've developed this, this work in the same way that they would develop an idea. So I come here and I work seven hours a day on it. And it's, it's, it's good for people who are not um, familiar with how a practicing artist works to see that. Vice versa, it's really good for me to come in here and see what kinds of things that they deal with on a daily basis and how they work and how their ideas get developed. A couple of years ago, when Eli Bornstein held, hung his sculpture out front, I really was beginning to make a connection between the artist in him and the artist in the science. And that's developed then a real interest of mine over the last few years. And then when uh, we were approached, I don't remember how it got started, but we were approached about potentially having an artist in residence here. I was very, very enthusiastic about it because I think there is a real coupling emotionally, philosophically, artistically between, you know, what we would call the arts and science. And so that's where it really came from. It's clear that the technical and scientific development is already shaping the city. The science and research we do here is globally connected, but you don't have to be next door. So in that sense, the science is strong and it's getting stronger and we're part of that growth here. Uh, in terms then of the art, artistic uh, development in parallel with, I think it's natural. Uh, my experience has been that, that a well-educated community is also highly interested in the arts, both in performing arts, visual arts, and so forth, as well as participating in, in the, the art itself. And so it's a natural coupling for a city which, which 
is culturally developing the arts and sciences are natural, natural partners. It, the staff just love watching it. They all do this. And they go down and visit and look at the paintings and watch your work. But there's certainly always a buzz standing on the mezzanine with their coffee watching this thing unfold. So it's, it's serving its purpose. That was Carol's idea was to put the studio down where, where we could see it because it's really magnificent. I guess we said earlier, you see the painting developing next to the development of a beam line. And that's just, that's just magic. We didn't plan that, mm -hmm. of course. That just came about. And it's really uh, uh, personifies the, the coupling of the art and science. That's great. Oh, it's, it's intellectual creativity. There's no question that that's where it lies. Uh, that's where I got started in what's led now to Carol being here and, and my inter interrelationships with Persephone Theater and others. All of those come out of my, my belief that it's, there's a, a kernel of, of the same development in the mind which leads to art and or science. It's a fundamental creative process. And you can express it as Carol does in her paintings, they, or I can do it in my pursuit of understanding a fundamental process in nature. It takes a tremendous amount of creativity. You have to think out of the box and go where literally no one's gone before. And that creates beautiful art. It creates great science, which is believable and reproducible. And that's one of the fundamental differences I love between science and art. Science must be absolutely reproducible, right? Whereas art, in some sense, shouldn't be, right? Her great work should never be reproducible by anybody else because the creative process must be different. For six weeks, basically, I interacted with the staff, watched what they did, talked to them, did some research in terms of what science, uh, of science history, art history, because I wanted to connect the two, and uh, came up with the work that I did come up with, which is a triptych, which you'll see shortly, uh, that talks about the creative journey in science, the beginning of an idea, the investigation of an idea, the realization of an idea. Basically, uh, the three pieces together are one piece. It's one piece. It's called First Light. That's the one thing that I knew I was going to do. Uh, that came from one of the first staff meetings I went to, where they spoke about the first time that they get light through a beam line. They call it First Light. And I thought, uh, that's extremely poetic, and it makes reference to creation, and, and I mean, everything. So I thought the piece is going to be called First Light. So that's what it is. When I made the initial proposal, I kind of said I am a figurative symbolist painter, so whatever I do will be figurative and will be symbolist. Uh, first of all, this painting had to represent other people's thoughts and other people's, uh, are my thoughts about what was going on here, and, and, but it had to bring in a lot of stuff that had to do with other people, which was new to me. So I, I took a lot of time to research things, to really develop what kind of ideas visually I wanted to put down, how the, the composition would be, um, all of that stuff. And I think that's something that I, that I will take with me because I, I oftentimes I get sort of a general idea and I, I'm at the canvas and I'm working away and uh, you know and more often than not you're kind of painting over and painting over because the idea wasn't completely developed when you started. Uh, whereas with this one, and I guess that's more of a scientific approach too, I was very sure and made sure I was very sure of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to put on the canvas before I actually started. And I think that is something that I will take with me, just a little bit more preparedness than I, than I usually have. Uh, the figure, because I'm a figurative symbolist painter, it, I wanted to include a figure, and this figure is the muse, uh, representative of the muse, that where the idea sparks from, that, that takes you in any kind of a development in, in art or in science or in anything. So um, I had, went one someone from the staff and sent out a call, you know, who's interested, we'll talk, and the only person who came to me was Bill Tomlinson, who's the executive director. Oh, I thought it was great. I, uh, I, uh was why I volunteered to do it, first of all, because I thought it was a, a, a great thing to do. And I wanted to participate, because I love art, right? I, really, I really do. And uh, the chance to uh, Im be immortalized, right, which in joking terms, uh, in a way which will cause people uh, to ponder, and, and I'm part of that, and the unveiling of the mysteries of, of science and, and life and the, and the, it's just a wonderful progression. And we all jokingly said, fortunately, Bill doesn't have to be naked in the last picture because there's always mysteries yet to be understood. <laughs> and I breathed a sigh of relief, and so did the whole facility. <laughs> and he was very interested in doing this, so he posed for me as my, as my muse. So throughout the piece, uh, this, this represents the beginning of the spark of an idea, the uh, research and development of it, and then sort of the realization of it in the last piece. 
So he's, he's hidden for the most part in the first one and becomes more and more unveiled uh, as, as, as things become more obvious through the process. Um, again, the darkness to light. And in the third painting, and this came from one of the staff, this idea that, that when an idea, when you do develop an idea and you find out it's going to work or you find out something new, generally it raises a whole lot more questions and it, it plunges you back into darkness again because you start all over again with the process. So that's why in the three paintings, they're going to begin with darkness and move back to darkness again. That, as, as I said, that was at their suggestion. I've got a globe above his head in the center one because they have such an international community here. Not just that they serve an international community in terms of people coming in to use the Synchrotron, but their staff has, uh, is an international staff. They come from all over the world to work here. So that's that reference. And it's all uh, set in the prairies. I wanted to make sure there was some prairie landscape, so there will be some, some prairie landscape there because that's where we are. You know, and it's a unique thing that, that this, this facility exists in Saskatoon. Well, first you're talking to an artist. So I think that art is a really important part of life in general. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a way to, to develop your thought processes. Um, it's, you know, like you might do a crossword puzzle to keep your, your thoughts sharp. You might do a piece of art. And then you're keeping your creative processes sharp too. I, I, it's, it's like anything else. You've got to use it or you lose it. And the, the creative thought patterns are exactly the same. So if you're doing something to be creative, that'll help in whatever, that it'll feed into whatever you're doing in your real life. So I think that art just has to be a part of everyone's life in general, one way or another. So putting it in the workplace is, is, is as I said, it's like putting yoga in the workplace or anything else that's, that's good for you. It, it helps to, to create a, a life that's, that's a whole life that has all different facets to it. And this is one great program. This is one way of engaging uh, the artistic community in, in, in this case in a scientific business that certainly we would not have had that coupling before. A lot of our people are I'm sure have a lot of hidden talent or even talent that I haven't seen. And uh, one idea was to have an arts and crafts show for the staff under Carol's uh, direction to, to bring everybody out and let's see the nice things you do. Carol first came, she said, well, let's have one, and two or three people said, yeah, okay. No, zero. But, zero. <laughs> I said yes. I said yes, okay. But then about a month ago, when she launched it again, you see what happened. And the staff by that point said, yeah, let's join in and, and be part of this art and science connection, which we believe so much in. We are the side by side with the synchrotron science forevermore <laughs> and uh, and I think that that's the best statement that we can possibly make is that that we put art and science and brought them together and connected them and understood that the creative process is the creative process no matter what the outcome is is a unique event. We are the first uh, synchrotron to have an artist in residence that we've, we've been able to uncover. And we are being copied by the Diamond facility. So that shows you we've, we've done it right. <laughs>